right now on Sunrise. Spring break travel warning. The video everyone is talking about this morning and tips to keep you safe on your next vacation. It's just down to two jurors left to be selected for the Derek Chauvin trial. How long this could take and what's next after all jurors are seated. An incident in St. Paul hits close to home here on Sunrise. And get out from America. If you're not doing that, we're going to kill you. The threat shouted at a bus stop and the much needed conversation it's sparking across the Twin Cities. After a gorgeous week of pattern change brewing, I'll let you know when the rain moves in and when the rain exits. And how would you like to get paid to live for free and drink wine all day? The newest job listing that has you buzzing in more ways than one. It's Monday, March 22nd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Spring break is looking a lot different this year. As health experts advise against traveling, some people are keeping it local. Others aren't going anywhere and using the time off to get a jump on spring cleaning. Sunrisers, what are you doing for spring break? Keeping it local? Maybe visiting your vaccinated family members? Why don't you text us? Let us know. 763-797-7215. Yeah, we'll be sharing some of your comments in a little bit. We get those right here in the studio. All of us here. Hey, we've got Alicia here tracking your morning commute and Guy out in the Care 11 backyard for your Monday morning weather. Hey, you know, we have a front kind of moving on through. So as I show you the temperature board, you can probably make out those cooler temperatures to the west. Now we'll have high pressure in charge for the first part of the day as that high pressure moves off to the north and east as the day progresses. That's when those clouds start to move in and then things turn wet tomorrow. But first temperatures still mild. You'll see some spots in the 40s in the metro and then outlying areas from Princeton up to Cambridge, St. Cloud down to Glencoe in the 30s. Your school day planner sunny for the first part again by lunchtime 51, mostly cloudy by four o'clock. We're at cloudy skies highs today in the upper 50s. Now look at the roads. We were tracking a crash on Manning Avenue near 94 just cleared here seconds ago. You can see 94 is back at normal speeds this morning, not causing any slowdowns whatsoever. That was the only crash around uh, the 694 494 loop and just a little on the eastern side of that. But zooming in closer again, drive times from Hudson to downtown St. Paul still looking good this morning. I'll have another check of your drive times coming up in just a few minutes. Look forward to that. Thanks, Alicia. We're live in downtown Minneapolis ahead of what could be the final day of jury selection and arguably the biggest trial in state history. The state versus former police officer Derek Chauvin. 13 jurors have been seated so far. 14 are needed, but at court close Friday, Judge Peter Cahill said the court would try to find 15 jurors to be certain they have enough when opening statements start Monday. We have continuing coverage online every day of the trial, including a live blog and gavel to gavel live video stream. Just head to care11.com or download the care 11 app on your phone or tablet and you can watch anytime. Happening today, the alleged Alina Health Clinic shooter Gregory Ulrich is in court for a bond hearing. He's charged with murder and attempted murder as well as weapons and explosives charges. Police say Ulrich walked into the Buffalo Clinic and started shooting, killing an Alina employee and injuring four others. Investigators believe Ulrich's dependency on pain meds was his motivation for the shooting. Court documents show he overdosed on opioids after a back surgery in 2016. And just before the attack in a video, he mentions taking 30 pills at a time. After the shooting, a search warrant shows police found oxycodone in Ulrich's motel room. Heads up before you follow through with those spring break plans. The Minnesota Department of Health has a new warning as millions of people travel to warm destinations. Kaya is live at MSP International Airport. What do travelers need to know to be safe, Kaya? Chris Gia, good morning. Let's give you, first of all, a live look here at MSP. You can see there is a steady flow of passengers this morning. Well, hey, the TSA is reporting that more than 1 million people passed through airport security each day for at least 10 days in a row now. Also want to show you this video here from the weekend in Miami. People packed together, most of them not wearing masks. In response to this, Miami Beach declared a state of emergency and an 8 p.m. curfew. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Department of Health is particularly concerned about spring breakers bringing home the COVID variant originally from the UK. There are already outbreaks of it in four Minnesota counties. So to slow the spread, health officials say when you're on the beach, fine, but don't congregate at the bar without your mask. If you do travel, include in your planning um, that you would stay away from others or quarantine when you get back to Minnesota. 
Dr. Anthony Fauci says that uh, that UK variant, also known as B117, it accounts for at least 30% of COVID cases in the US. So definitely something to be mindful of as you travel, guys. Yeah, another thing to consider. Thanks, Kaya. Meanwhile, we've hit another threshold in the fight against COVID-19 in Minnesota. New data from the state shows more than 1.4 million people have received at least one dose of the vaccine and that 839,000 Minnesotans are fully vaccinated. These numbers mean that one in four people in Minnesota have started the vaccination process. For more information about COVID-19 vaccines, head to care11.com slash vaccine, or you can scan the code on the bottom right of your screen with your phone, and it will take you right there. Now time for your morning rush. Investigators are looking into an apparent murder-suicide in Rockford. The Wright County Sheriff's Office tell us they found a man and woman shot inside a home Friday night. Neighbors called them after seeing an empty vehicle left running in the driveway. Officials believe the man killed the woman before turning the gun on himself. The last of the confirmation hearings for President Biden's cabinet nominees happened today. The Senate is expected to confirm Martin Joseph Walsh as Labor Secretary. Walsh highlighted his experience as a union leader and Boston mayor as reasons to be confirmed. Walsh says he will fight for a more equitable workforce. Families who have lost loved ones to police violence is saying enough is enough. They rallied outside the governor's mansion Sunday. They demanded justice for Dalal Id along with his father. Id was killed back in January after exchanging gunfire with Minneapolis police. The BCA says they found six bullets and a handgun near his body as well as a backpack of ammunition. Gable Stevenson is your NCAA national heavyweight champion. The U of M Junior beat out Michigan's Mason Paris for the title win. Stevenson is the sixth gopher to win an NCAA heavyweight title. He even celebrated the win with a backflip. And that is your Monday Morning Rush. Now in our Sunrise Live, one of the most talked about stories on our Care Love and Facebook page is an unfortunate reminder that incidents and threats targeting Asian Americans are happening right here in Minnesota. For our Care Love and family, this story really hits close to home. On Friday, Song Tong Vang, who is Gia's dad, he was dropping off his five-year-old grandson at the school bus stop just east of Lake Phelan in St. Paul. A woman drove up to Vang and started screaming at him, threatening his life. And eventually that woman drove on to yell at other Asian Americans standing at nearby bus stops. She rolling her car closer to me. The thing that I remember exactly as she said to me is that we hate Asian people. Go back to where you come from, okay? And get out from America. If you're not doing that, we're gonna kill you. And I said, oh, okay, you talk to me, right? And she said, yes. Wow. Gia shared this tweet last week after her father sent her photos of the car that was driving around yelling at Asian families. Vang fought in the secret war in Laos on the side of the United States and then moved to Minnesota back in 2011 in part because he thought our state was peaceful. Governor Tim Walz responded to news of this incident, writing on Twitter, Song Tong Vang deserves our utmost respect. We're glad you're here in Minnesota and I'm so sorry that this happened to you. St. Paul police, they're investigating what happened, trying to determine who was behind the wheel and made the threats. Now in wake of a mass shooting in Georgia that left eight people dead, including six Asian women, people across the country rallied over the weekend to show their support for the Asian American community from Los Angeles to Pittsburgh, where actress Sandra Oh asked Americans to speak up against injustice. If you'd like to read more and see more of the story with Gia's dad, you can do so at care 11. Dot com. And Gia, when I saw what happened to your dad, it broke my heart. It was an unfortunate incident, but it's something that happens far too often uh, to so many people here in Minnesota and across the country. So first of all, how are you doing and how is your dad this morning? Yeah, I think my dad's still pretty confused and hurt about the whole situation. I just talked to him yesterday and he still feels uh, very much uh, all the emotions because that is really something that's so traumatizing that happens yeah. to you when you're confronted with racism in that way. And so I definitely understand those feelings and I have not gotten a lot of sleep over the weekend, but um, I've gotten a lot of really good support too and from the community and viewers. So thank you. Thanks, Alicia. Well, you know, these headlines about anti-Asian hate will inevitably and unfortunately fade from national and even local news, but the threat will still be out there and real for Asians. And we know that because we, I, have seen new cases around the country every single day. So please 
Take care of yourself. If you have an elder, let them know what is going on. Create a plan with your family to help run errands with them. And if this sort of thing happens to you or a loved one, please report it because it shows through data and stories what it's like to be an Asian American right now. And I know it sucks to have to justify our lived experiences this way, but data can help spark policy changes so we can better protect not just the Asian community, but everyone. 541 now. Guy, let's get to you with our One Thing Weather. Yeah, right now we do have some pockets of fog, especially in the St. Cloud area where we have some low clouds. Visibility just under two miles there. Brainerd, three miles, zooming into the metro, making out A-OK. -okay. Visibility at around 10 miles from the Twin Cities. And uh, looking at the roads for you this morning, if you're waking up in Crystal, good morning. A live look at Highway 100 near County Road 81. Pretty quiet out there, which is what we love to see for the Monday morning commute. Well, a wild encounter all caught on video inside the San Diego Zoo. How police say this man and child ended up face to face with an elephant. Plus, add a couple more breaks to your work. Researchers say you'll be surprised what happens.